I'm Tom Longstreet. I'm the executive director of Recycle Norwood, and uh, I've been here since 1996. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what actually goes on at Recycle North? Yeah, uh, I mean, what Recycle North does is try to combine th its three pieces, its three mission areas into one and try to integrate them as best we can. So we have, uh, we do educational um, training, uh, we do environmental stewardship, and we do, uh, we create economic opportunities. So, I mean, another way of thinking about it is it's reuse, it's job skill training, it's poverty relief. We, we work with uh, young people, uh, we work with adults who are in transition, who are unemployed or homeless or in transition, uh, dependent on public assistance, uh, want to build new job skills and, and become employed, uh, gainfully, uh, productively involved in the community. And, and we relieve poverty by giving away or making available at very low cost uh, essential household goods, uh, building materials. Um, the way our environmental stewardship work works is we're just we're taking in things that might otherwise end up in a landfill and uh, uh, giving them new life. Um, so we, we reuse, we have a traditional thrift store, we, we reuse major appliances, uh, we're an authorized Microsoft refurbisher. Um, and we integrate job skill training into all of these pieces. So we're teaching people to become appliance technicians, teaching them to become computer uh, hardware uh, and software uh, technicians. Uh, we, we integrate office administration job training into our office work and uh, sort of running the place. Um, and we run, uh, integrate retail management into the operations. And then on the building material side, we run a youth build program. So we're teaching young people who've dropped out of high school who are all economically disadvantaged, how to um, build homes uh, and how to do weatherization. Last year we started a weatherization component where we're actually uh, uh, contracting with a lo local agency to, to uh, weatherize low-income housing. And uh, in the process, we teach young people how to do this important uh, skill and do it well so that they can go on and get good paying jobs and, and also in the process we're, we're helping all these low-income people use less energy, uh, protect the environment, but also pay a lot less in heating bills, which here in Vermont is significant. <laughs> so. I, think, uh, I think you may have just answered about three of the questions that I had, but that's great. Um, anyway, I can get the information that's most important is, is good for me. Um, but going back to you know, the topic of you know, taking waste and transforming that into um, a resource or reusable um, product or something that you know becomes useful. Uh, what, what exactly happens here in, in regards to that? Well, uh, so we have we have a couple of, we have, we have four different locations right now. So I mean, here at our household goods store, our, our office, our train, main training space is above our household goods store. People bring in stuff they no longer need. Um, some of it's working, some of it's not working. Uh, some needs to be refurbished, some is in great condition. We just put it on the floor, put a price tag on it, and it sells. Or we, you know, a low-income person comes in, someone who needs help, and um, we, we give it to them for free. We have a, what we call our essential goods program. Uh, essentially, we, we give vouchers to partner service agencies, and they, uh, they give those to their caseworkers who give them to their clients who need help. Um, and then they can use those vouchers as if it was cash here at Recycle North. So I mean, in terms of the environmental work, we're, we're keeping things out of the landfill. The, the, uh, we, we have a deconstruction service uh, that's connected to our whole building material reuse operation. So we, we actually compete with demolition companies. And instead, but instead of tearing down a building um, and, and putting the whole thing into a landfill, co-mingling it using a big excavator, we do it carefully and essentially reverse construction and reuse everything from a two by four to the kitchen sink. Um, and so lumber, uh, roofing material, some roofing, metal roofing, we're not usually able to reuse um, asphalt shingles, but um, we'll try to recycle those asphalt shingles. They often become road substrate. Um, and that's one of the advantages of doing things by hand is things that otherwise would get commingled and wouldn't be recyclable you can separate out and recycle those component pieces. Even though you can't reuse the whole thing, you can recycle parts. So, uh, and some of the materials that we can't reuse in their current condition, we will add value to by, uh, by 
through what we call waste not products, where we're actually building new products out of waste material. So we're building birdhouses out of barn board. We're, we're making cutting boards out of hardwood flooring. Uh, we're making chicken coops out of, uh, you know, just uh, sort of lumber, short pieces of lumber. And, uh, you know, these are things that don't have a whole lot of value, those materials in their in the state we were able to harvest them from the deconstruction but through the process of uh, the waste not products uh, we were able to turn them into useful products and fun things you know really uh, that, that engage the creativity and the skills of the young people we're trying to teach uh, construction skills so we're we're teaching these young people especially in the youth build program the carpentry skills safety skills through the waste not products wood shop great so Obviously, here you know at Recycle North, you have um, a lot of uh, things, if you will, that, that come into uh, um, your area. And um, how do you filter all the uh, things that you know come here? And, and you know, and what do you do with the, the things that aren't you know um, able to get pushed out into the uh, reuse center and the store and things like that? Where does it all go? Well, uh, we we filter it with difficulty. Uh, you know, there's. Uh, it's a constant challenge. One of the, one of the challenges is that there's so much stuff out there. You know what's you know one person's garbage is another person's treasure. I mean whatever the phrase is there, but it's and also the other challenge is that people sometimes have unreasonable expectations for what we can reuse. So they're going through their home. They've been using something for a long time. They'd like to keep it out of the dump. Sometimes they're just, just good old Yankee thrift. Sometimes it's freeloading. And so people try to get, unload stuff to us that they really should take the dump. And you know, some things don't have life left of them. Um, and so that's one of the ways it's challenging. You know, Most people are really trying to help. They want to provide some good service. And, and often, for the right person, something has value. But it is very difficult to sort out the good from the bad, you know, what we should keep from what we should not try to work on. And uh, you can quickly get overwhelmed. Um, it's also another challenge, it's very seasonal. So something like two thirds of rental properties in Burlington turn over on May, you know, the end of between May and June. So uh, the last week of May, we get tons of stuff coming in the door. First week of June, <laughs> it reverses. And, and so we have a pickup truck and we're you know, we're, we put stuff in storage one week, and then immediately the next week we're trying to pull it out of storage as fast as we can. And if you go down the store, you know, this, you know right now, this afternoon, we're in, you know, it's June, what is it, June, June 3rd, everything's leaving, which is a good thing, because it's actually a lot easier when things leave. It, it's also where you generate revenue to pay for things. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, you know, on the, on the end of May is a very difficult time because, it's all cost. I mean, you're putting things into stores, you're, you're sorting it, you're pricing it, and you're handling stuff a whole lot. So it's a very, it's a big process, and it's probably why there aren't a whole lot of, you know, there's a lot of clothing, folks who handle clothing, you know, a lot of thrift stores that deal in clothing, and they, they've sort of figured that out. They can send a lot of stuff overseas. They, there's a market for just the fabric, just recycling bulk fabric. Uh, dealing with Big things like furniture and couches and sofas and major appliances, uh, computers is, is hard. And um, so we're, we try to make a go of it and, and, and do stuff that really serves the community and, and create some fun opportunities. You know, people love shopping here. We, we, we're open to the public. Uh, a lot of, most of our customers are very, you know, low, moderate income, but we're open to the public and there's tons of wealthy people who just get a kick out of shopping at Recycle North because they're, they're thrifty people who like bargains and, and uh, they love the hunt. They love finding new things. And, and that creates a lot of fun.